Well, his punch in the air said absolutely everything. You know, I've never really believed this, your name's on the trophy, but Neil Foles, he's starting to make me doubt that. Well, look, he's somebody who just goes missing for a few months at a time, you know, as far as you never see him playing. Well, I mean, I think we heard Philip Sub say it's his fifth century of the season. That's not very many, but right now, his match play was up there with the best. And, you know, he's won the world title, he's been in three world finals. And I know we always talk about that because occasionally you forget it because Dotty just goes on the missing list, but he's back today. And the last three frames, no one could have played any better no. he didn't miss anything. Yeah, Ronnie, you know, the first nine frames had a half century and eight final frame century finish up just in terms of the afternoon and snooker. Was... I, I think that was a typical example of that match there, why Sean Murphy doesn't win as much as he probably does with his ability. Four, three up, banging the balls, found a way of letting Dotty back in. Mm. If he goes five, three up, game over. So um, that's one part of the match, but then you can't take nothing away from Dotty because he played unbelievable and queued as well as he could play. So he was a deserved winner, but really should have had the chance. He should have been 5 3 down. Mm. So that's, and Murphy does that a lot. Yeah. And can he take it out of his game? Probably not. It's mm. like trying to change the colour of your eyes. Yeah. It's just one of your Achilles heels. Um, from the point of view <coughs> of, of, uh, of Chris Dart, you know, he's came from 3 0 down against Barry Hawkins, 4 0 down against Shao Gadong. Today was much more nip and tuck, wasn't it? Especially in those early six frames. He was always playing catch up, you know. He was always being caught up by Sean Murphy. Yeah, you know, he, he only went behind 4 3. That was yeah. the only time. And then, he, and then he kicked on the last three frames. He played brilliant. But he's been working with Chris Henry, um, doing some stuff with his Q action, a little bit like Mark Williams. They're like born again, sort of snooze good players he's 40 and he's really enjoying his game and uh, as Ronnie said there you know Dot's such a tenacious player when he get when he's scoring he's a match for anyone and uh, he's yeah. got every chance of winning this tournament but he was really good to have on the sofa yesterday well, wasn't he after that well, comeback well, this well, is well, me happy he's one of my favorite lines here of the week well done Graham cheers thank you well done thanks, thanks for coming in well you perfect time you can do all the analysis with us we can go through the whole <laughs> thing I'm sure you want to relive every yeah. every second of it um, but before we even look at a single shot the punch of the air told us everything there high please yeah it's just nice to you, you get through times when you think you're never going to be in a final again so it's great to come back and play well and I've been fed up telling people that I've been playing well my, my results weren't as good as what I've, I've been playing so it was nice to actually play half decent all right one nil up then one all two one up two all and then we can back out after the mid sessions let's take a look through frame five as you got your nose in front again you and Neil can have a chat through this yeah I mean look you had to stay with him, didn't you? I know that you went behind yesterday, but uh, you know you scored really well, and uh, here we see it in this frame. You know, I actually felt, to me, it felt a bit like some of the matches I've won at the Crucible. Well, yeah. I didn't feel I was a better player. I felt right. Sean was playing better than me, but I just hang in and hang in, and eventually, when it gets to the end, I win. But I thought you looked, I thought you looked the better player. To be honest, I honestly you know, felt, yeah. I felt Sean because my cue ball control's pathetic. It's never been any good. Yeah, I'm just like a 60 break for me. I've got to be in and out of ball at the 30 times. Last three found though, a bit of string, wasn't it? We yeah, I had it okay at the end, but um, well, I had an easy clearance to go four to, mm. and, I, and I played again a bad positional shot. Mm. But Sean was just always perfect all the time, I thought, but there you go. Yeah, we well, can have a look at that, actually. We can have a look at frame six now. Boys can talk through it amongst themselves. What a sofa. Yeah, I mean, mm. the, the problem here was, you know, Sean, as we're saying, you know, he started playing some great shots, and you now he got back into it and and, and got to three all here. Um, just looking at the way this goes here, it just it kind of was just dominant in this frame. I think what we're going to see, Colin, is that it, it really comes down to the frames that follow this, where Sean was in twice, you know, early, and he missed. This was a shot, Graham, you're, you're speaking about there. I'm not sure. What are you I trying just to do didn't, there? I honestly never knew what to do. I actually didn't have a clue what to do. <laughs> so what, you going to play the black in the middle to, then? I was going to play the black in the middle, oh, right, because okay. I thought I couldn't... I thought the knuckle was in the way, no matter what way I played it. If I screwed mm. back, it was in the way, or if I, I could maybe try and knuckle it and come out. Yeah. But I thought if I, if I just pot it, I'll be on the black in the middle and I'll go down Love and miss that. it. That's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was one of them shots, wasn't put it? Put our mind at rest, because we didn't know we what we were doing either. <laughs> that's what I'm like anyway. You're working yeah. on our world. We, we never miss from here, by yeah, the way. I know. We missed one for three years. I love that though, you'd never get a football in an interview saying, to be honest, I just didn't have a Scooby <laughs> what was going on, you, you can't beat it. You, you're right, okay, so Sean comes back then, so we skip over that. And then it's two frames, isn't it? And the key frames were, as you've already said, Ronnie was saying just before you came in, I mean, Murphy had them in his hands, yeah. and then all credit this man coming in the stage. So let's have a look at frame eight first. Yeah, this is a massive turning point, because Murphy, in looking a million dollars as he does, 
and he never quite recovered from that. Shot but you know, you had to clear up, Graham. You know, yeah. they're there. They might be it's there, but you're going to take them. Yeah, again, that was sort of from playing another terrible positional shot. It's just I've got to do these shots. I know, but you're still putting yeah, the ball. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know I know. I mean? You've I still know. got to be cool well to put them, haven't you? I'm, I'm probably my worst critic for being. Well, over what I'm saying is, like you say, you know, you've been playing well and not getting yeah. the results. Sometimes your semi-finals, you can tighten up on shots. Yeah. But you know, like it was nice that I, I was happy. to Finish it the way I finished it. Mm -hmm. With the two clearances and then obviously the century. So, yeah. Stanch in good stead. Then in the next frame, again, the same thing happened. Ronnie was in the commentary for this frame and then Sean got in and just completely lost the cue ball. I think we're, I guess we're going to see that here. I, I don't actually know if think that shot he played there, but see, when, when he played the blue before that, he screwed it back too far. Yeah. It was kind of yeah. in between. But You're actually good at that kind of shot. He, he, he's really, he was scared to decelerate and he's hit it too hard. He played a bad shot and the red to get on the blue, leaving yeah. himself straight. Yeah. You, you know, it's game, the balls are there yeah. to take. You don't. <coughs> yeah, that's perfect. But the, these these mistakes only become important when Graham clears up and wins the Correct. frame. So yeah. It counts Correct. times ten then. And how much does that help the confidence? How much does that help the momentum when you're in your seat and you're going nine times out of ten he's going to win? I'm, I'm going to lose this frame. He's in, and you get in, and then you have the bottle to steal yeah, those the, two the, frames. The, the sore frames, you know, it's going to hurt him. And I, I was really angry that I never cleared up to go four two. So when I got the chance again, I thought it just. Just play the way I normally play and play quick and just get it done. Yeah, well, listen, talking about getting it done, let's have a look yeah. at the last frame. With a half century in every frame, Neil, then we had the mm. big century. And I, I think here, yeah, Graham, you kind of smell blood now. You're in front, you've won yeah. those two frames. You don't want it to go 5 all and get no. too tasty this match. And you made a century, you know, and I thought you looked brilliant here. You never looked like missing this. We knew that one From was in straight away. Yeah, well, I thought it weren't, but like, obviously, you know, it did go in. There's a few more shots here, but I, I like the way you put the frame away, you know. Yeah, they were all kind of awkward. I couldn't really get right in mm. all the time. Mm. You never really got out of position. No, I was you never think that... massively out, but I just yeah. couldn't get absolutely perfect. Your technique looks quite compact, you know. I know you've been working with Chris yeah. and everything, but I've, you I've look been real compact and tight. Yeah, in, I've you know? kind of always been like that anyway, but I've, I've been doing a lot with Chris, and it's helped because I was... Disillusioned with playing, I wasn't really practicing. Because well, well, you, you, I worked with him a few years ago, are you hitting, trying to hit the centre of the white with No, him? I'm, 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 I'm practising to hit the centre of the white, right, but okay. I very rarely ever use centre of the white when I'm right. playing. It's yeah, just yeah. so that I know, I think I was speaking to you in China mm. about it, so mm. that I know, if I know that's where centre is, I then know when I'm playing a touch of right or a touch of left. Okay. As with before, before I saw Chris, yeah. a touch of right for me was loads of right. Right, got And you. where I thought a touch of left was actually centre of the ball, so, so I was uncoordinated. So your safety that. playing all the time yeah. would be all like over that. your yeah. face. 16 years. <laughs> 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 I thought I was in the middle and something. Oh, you're way on the left. That's I was exactly like, really? what I was doing. That's what I was, I was like. looking so over my shoulder. And I was yeah, like, it was really. nice to just try something different. It yeah. kept me playing again because I, I wasn't practising and yeah, I was yeah, getting yeah. fed up. So. Yeah. On the subject of ice, and obviously it felt brilliant, just talk me through that sort of putting the cue away and getting a stand innovation in the temper drum, such a great place for snooker. Brilliant, it's a great place to play. I mean, the Crucible's obviously fantastic, but here we don't play with that many here normally. Mm. I think the kind of Ali Pali is the only one where you get as many crowd, but yeah. they're appreciative here. Yeah. Like, you can put something very basic in the applaud. Yeah. So, I mean, it's different <laughs> from when like, you play in Britain and you've, you've got to hit a 140 before you get a clap, so it's, it's nice. <laughs> it's nice to play here. <laughs> Right, um, tonight then, you go out and have a wee meal, turn the TV off, or will, yeah. you, will, you, will you watch every no. shot of Mark Williams' judge? I won't see a ball. I won't see a ball. I'll find out the score, but I won't, yeah. I won't be watching it. Well, it's not going to change it, is it? It's not going to change so anything. I'm going to have to play well to win anyway, so it's irrelevant who I play. Yeah, but you get up tomorrow morning, you're back in yeah. a ranking final. Yeah, it's good. It sounds is, good. It is. Sounds well. There's a smile. You got them smiling. Brilliant. It's excellent stuff. And uh, mm. you know, we talked earlier about how the bookies were fussing over the three names. And yeah. I think this morning they could have got yeah. decent odds on, on this man. Not anymore. Yeah, but he's saying it sounds good. I know what he's saying here. He, he, he's happy with how things are going, but he wants to win tomorrow. You know, so he's not. There's no point in getting too excited tonight, is there? Because he can do that tomorrow night yeah. after the final if he wins. Yeah, no worries there. We've been absolutely spoiled today and we will be back this evening. We've had a wonderful afternoon tonight, though. Judd Trump against Mark Williams. I mean, unbelievable. And the place in tomorrow's final is up for grabs. So they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So given the week this man's had in Berlin, he must be seven foot tall going into the final <laughs> tomorrow. Who's he going to play? Join us at 6.45 tonight on The Dot.